Arguably, Activision started in the spare bedroom in my two-bedroom apartment in Sunnyvale. Um, that was the apartment complex that had the tennis courts where I would play tennis. And it, I had, had a roommate in that room for the longest time, and he had moved out. So I had a spare bedroom. Uh, so before we even had an office, I was doing the engineering that allowed us to create video games. Generally, you have to build a, a, a box, and that box connects into the Atari or whatever your game console happens to be. And then you have a data terminal, and you're able to manipulate the memory, download code, and that sort of thing. You have to have one of those. This thing's called a development system. And um, we didn't have one. We were a young startup, so I had to create them. So I was wiring up development systems in the second bedroom of my, my apartment. Um, and so I didn't have like a, the day that I showed up at, at work in the office, you know, it, that office, that was it. That was, that was everything that was going on for the company. We had also left Atari kind of staggered. Um, Jim was off getting venture capital put together, so we really had to take no paychecks if we left. And so, you know, I don't know, I remember I think Larry left first and then a couple of us left and, you know, we kind of trickled out of Atari because we were still um, taking a paycheck that way. But, um, yeah, so work began in earnest in that second bedroom from the beginning of, of Activision. Activision began in an 800 square foot office. That's pretty small. Um, in fact, our game design lab was the kitchen. And so when one of the few people that were hired for the business side came in to get coffee, they had to come into the design lab and trip all over us. Um, so things were small. Things were very streamlined. Um, we loved it. And we worked our butts off. I mean... We worked a lot harder at Activision because we owned it than we did at Atari. Um, but as far as working together, that was really what made Activision. We had four guys who came from completely different backgrounds. We had different training, different experiences, but we meshed well together. So every game was the product of all four of us. I mean, in reality, one person did every line of code, one person did the graphics, one person did the sound effects. Every part of the video game was done by one guy back then. But it was done in an open environment where all of our monitors were turned toward each other. Just imagine four monitors facing out to the room in a small room. And we wouldn't hesitate to kibitz. I mean, we'd look over there and say, well, that looks like a piece of crap. What are you doing there? Fix that, you know? Um, so there was a lot of um, peer pressure, there was a lot of helping, there was a lot of collaboration. Each product was, you know, the product of a group of people that worked well together and thought alike. So you didn't really have that at Atari because it was bigger. There were 32 people in the department, and while we all went to lunch together, we didn't exactly work in one room like that. And we weren't all in the kitchen in Atari. That actually helped. It actually made the games better. You have to concentrate on a video game. When I did Pitfall, for example, it was a thousand hours of work, and I had to keep thousands of different details in my mind at the same time, or else I'd end up, and the piece of code that I was writing now didn't mesh with the piece of code I wrote last week, because I had, hadn't remembered exactly how they interconnect and whatever. So it's very, very intense concentration. So even in this this um, communal lab, we had our privacy. We would roll up to our computer, and if we were hunched over our computer, nobody talked to you, because you could see, just hear the gears turning. You could see the smoke coming out of our ears. Uh, so we were concentrating very heavily. But in video game design, unlike writing software for a bank or something like that, it's all up on the screen. So when you write a module that you know, part of the game, and you finish that part of the game, you tend to then play the game to see how it worked. It's really nice. It's all visual. It's all on the screen. So in that case, we would kind of roll back, lean back in our seats, because the monitors were on this top shelf of our desk, and we would start playing. So 
rolling back and holding a joystick in your hand is the invitation for other people to get involved. Otherwise, when you're hunched over, we all knew, don't talk to me, I won't talk to you when you're like that. Um, so it, it was just a very good dynamic. It worked very well. I had never seen anything like that before, certainly not at Atari. And in fact, um, I think there's a Harvard Business School um, case study that talks about that. And the idea of having a small group of people working together closely uh, that have a good group synergy is an excellent way to make games. And a lot of people have taken that concept and to this day do it. They break down game design teams into small groups and put them in the same room so that they're all together. The artist is here, the sound effects guy, a couple of designers, three of the programmers, they're all there. Um, so they, they're living and breathing that particular game every day.